special guest today is Sean Parnell, the Republican candidate for Congress in the 17th Congressional. Good to be with you, Sean. How are things, hey, going? How are things going on the campaign trail? Uh, very, very good, but also exhausting. <laughs> we're, we're in the home stretch now, you know, so we've got to sprint to the finish. You know, there's been a lot of campaign ads. I can't turn on the TV without seeing an ad either for you or for your opponent, Connor Lamb. Um, as far as the negative, th there seems to be a lot of negative going on between the two of you. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, I, I try to talk specifically about about his record or things that he himself has done, right? Things that are empirically provable based on his voting record in Washington or how he conducts himself back in the district. I've been, you know, his he's drilled down on one attack against me and, you know, it kind of hurts uh, about the whole pre-existing conditions thing uh, because, you know, protecting with uh, protecting folks with pre-existing conditions is something that's deeply personal to me, and also something that I'm passionate about, uh, because I have a lot of pre-existing conditions. <laughs> I'm like a walking pre-existing condition, so I, I am I am committed to making sure that that people have pre-existing people who have pre-existing conditions are taken care of. But his ads have said the opposite, and and it's just not true. You say it's not true. Uh, and of course, uh, the president says it's not true about him, although he's been promising a health care plan to be introduced in the Congress for years and it hasn't happened. Um, you know, I guess that leaves for an opening for an attack. Are you committing to proposing legislation if elected to Congress to deal with this whole issue once and for all? Yes. Well, I mean, there's there's a, a bill in the Senate right now that's uh, sponsored by Tom Tillis, Senator Tillis out, out of North Carolina and co-sponsored uh, by, I think, 16 or 17 other senators uh, that, you know, would would mandate that pre-existing conditions be covered uh, if Obamacare goes by the wayside. Right. And so for me, look, there are things about the Affordable Care Act that work. Uh, you know, like keeping kids on their parents' insurance companies until they're 26, protecting with people with pre-existing conditions, those are great. Let's preserve them. But there are also a lot of things about the Affordable Care Act that don't work. And I think that we can either discard those things outright or improve them to make them better and more affordable for people. The, the Affordable Care Act is tough, John, because my position on, on this bill is that the, the Democrats in Congress mis misrepresented themselves to pass this bill. You had Nancy Pelosi talking about you know, having to read the bill to act, or pass the bill uh, to know what was in it. You had the, you know, the architect of Obamacare traveling all around the country after it was passed saying, you know, a lack of transparency is a, is a good thing. Uh, and it was a good thing that the American people didn't know the full truth about the bill before it was passed. I mean, all this is on is on the record. And I don't like when the people are, are lied to or or. Or, or there's political spin involved with regards to pushing legislation through that might not be in their best interest. So for me, you know, I had loved ones uh, in my people in my family who lost their healthcare coverage who now have to pay out of pocket, or people who saw their premiums quadruple. And so uh, those what, those are the things uh, that I'd like to improve with Obamacare: improve access and improve affordability for people. And, but let's keep the things that work. I mean. Put bluntly, is Connor Lamb lying about you? In this regard, yes. In this regard, yes. I mean, look, John, politics is a contact sport. <laughs> it's just how it goes. I, you know, I, I get it. I, I took real life flack in Afghanistan. I can take the stuff that he throws about me, but at least be fair about it. And one of the things that, one of the things that, that that bothers me about Connor is that his record is what it is. Right? Be proud of your voting card. Stand by your record. Don't run from it. Defend it here in the district and make the case as to why you think your voting record is in the best interest uh, to the people of PA 17. Don't run from it. Don't try to be something that you're not. And right now, that's what he's doing. Well, amplify on that a bit. What is it that he's doing? How is he doing it? To, you're, you're basically saying he misrepresents himself. He does. He does. I mean, I'll, I just go down the line, said he was going to be pro-gun, has an F rating from the NRA, said he was going to be pro-life, voted against the Born, Act, Born Alive Act, not once but twice, said he was going to be an independent, moderate voice for Western Pennsylvania, but votes with Ilhan Omar and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in the squad almost 90% of the time, 
said he was going to oppose Nancy Pelosi, but the truth is he votes with her on every significant piece of legislation over 90% of the time, said that he was going to, he looked forward to supporting the Trump supporters and Republicans who put him in office, and then a couple short months later voted to impeach the president, gratefully accepted fraternal order of police endorsements in 2018, said he would defend the police and have their backs. Two years later, he's marching around with defund the police radicals. John, he's, he's a case study in contrast. And if you're going to take those positions, you're going to sell yourself one way to the people uh, of Western Pennsylvania and do something very differently in Washington. The people have a right to know about that. And I think that Connor should be proud of his record and, and, and defend it here in district and not run from it like he's doing. Let me ask you this question. Uh, you know, a lot of folks think that your race is dependent on the presidential race which is to say that if uh, President Trump carries the 17th district, it makes sense for you as a strong supporter of the president to be uh, elected and vice versa. Um, Connor Lamb has been a strong supporter of Joe Biden's uh, and the same might hold true on that end. Do you think there's a connection there? Do you think that if, if, uh, if somebody is a Biden supporter, should they vote for Sean Parnell? I would make the case that that they should, um, and 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 hopefully you know. But but let me back off before before I answer that question. Um, I do think, to a certain extent, so much of of what happens here in Western Pennsylvania or in PA seventeen is driven by the top of the ticket. I mean, it, John, I do think that if if President Trump wins Pennsylvania and President Trump wins PA seventeen, then I I win PA seventeen. I, I would certainly say that the same thing about Joe Biden. If he won, if he wins Pennsylvania in PA 17, then Lamb will probably win PA 17. That's that's the thing that's been kind of shocking to me I mean, as a first time candidate when running in a presidential. So much is determined uh, by by the top of the ticket. Um, but there are, you know, I, I, I am I am a supporter of President Trump and his and his policies. Do I agree with everything that he says? Absolutely not. Of course not. <laughs> but but. You know, his policies have been very good for the people of PA 17. But if there are people out there that that maybe, um, you know, I, I think, you know, here, here's what I think. I think that there's only one person in this race right now, John, that that can say with a straight face right now that they will be that moderate voice for Western Pennsylvania, um, that 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 will be a warrior for the people of Pen Western Pennsylvania. And, and that's me. Um, and and you know, look at what Lamb has promised. Look at what Lamb promised to be and look at how he's conducted himself in Washington. He's, he's done the exact opposite on almost every major piece of, of legislation or every significant vote that's been brought to the House floor. Um, I will be a warrior for Western Pennsylvania. And, and, and I won't seek just to represent Republicans. I mean, this, this job is about bringing people together and serving everybody. And, and I really look forward to, uh, to, I look forward to doing that in, in November after I win. Well, you sort of anticipated my final question, which is, are you going to win? How do you think how do you feel out there? You're out there. How do you feel about this race right now? I feel good. I do. I mean, John, we've been working really hard for a year. We've been out knocking doors for a year. We're talking to thousands of voters and we're doing it safely, you know, um, and, and we're doing everything that we can to bring people together. We're going to areas in PA 17 where, we're, where Republican candidates haven't gone in a very long time and trying to build bridges, you know, um, and, and I think that that hard work will pay off uh, in November. And, and I, you know, I feel really good about it, John. I mean, we talk to Democrats and Republicans at the doors every single day. And, and every time, I mean, I would say on 95% of the doors, and this is not an exaggeration at all, the people are like, we're, we're with you, you know? Um, so I think in this sort of hyper-partisan environment that they're in, people always aren't always, aren't always outwardly, uh, they don't always talk about who they're going to support, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but the people that we talk to at the doors, 95% positive, and I feel really confident. Well, Sean Parnell, Republican candidate for Congress in the 17th Congressional District, always a pleasure to be with you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, John. And our special guest is Congressman Connor Lamb from the 17th Congressional District. Congressman, thank you, sir, very much for being with me. I appreciate it. Good to be with you again, John. So let me just ask you right off the bat, how do you think things look in the 17th, uh, 17th Congressional as we go down to the last week? I think it's competitive. You know, it's a very competitive district and, um, you know, it's full of, of people who are pretty 
independent minded. Um, so, you know, I kind of come out of it just always feeling impressed by the fact that people seem to really listen to the arguments that we're making and evaluate them carefully. And that's all I can ask of anybody. You have a, a number of television ads on TV now, and so does your opponent, Sean Parnell, uh, and it's gotten a little negative. What bothers you most about the attacks on you that you might see on TV? Uh, mainly just that they don't relate to any issues that our constituents are actually experiencing, and they don't relate to any particular vote that I've taken or not taken. You know, they just kind of throw around these labels having to do with moderate and liberal and all these politicians that aren't from Western Pennsylvania. And what people tell me out there is they just want to hear about the issues. Where do you stand? Where does your opponent stand? We'll make up our mind. Uh, and, you know, their campaign has just pretty much get, been completely free from any discussion of the issues up to this point. Is it fair to say they're misrepresenting you and your positions? I, I think so. Yeah. And I, I think the voters feel that way as well. I mean, they've used a lot of these same attacks. Now this is the third time in a row. Um, I, I just don't think it's, it's helpful what they're doing. If you want to talk about, you know, a particular place where I stand on jobs or energy policy or taxes or healthcare or anything that's important to this area, then go ahead and do it. But I don't think they do it because they know that the votes I've cast and the policies I've worked on have been good for Western Pennsylvania. You know, I've interviewed Sean Parnell, and he basically says that you characterize yourself as a moderate when in fact you're a liberal and you vote, what, 80% of the time plus with Nancy. Yeah, Pope. I don't characterize myself as anything. It's always them that are doing that. That's the point I'm trying to make is they, they throw around these labels like that that have nothing to do with any vote I've actually taken. And so people tend to get frustrated by that because they can't follow it when you're using all these labels as opposed to just saying, Here's where we stand on healthcare. You know, I support the Affordable Care Act. He doesn't. That's the way we really should have a campaign and a debate. You know, uh, speaking of the Affordable Care Act, he uh, says he's really bothered uh, by the characterization that he does not support uh, the pre-existing condition uh, requirements of coverage in the Affordable Care Act. What's your response to him on that? Well, the difference is simple. The Affordable Care Act protects people with pre-existing conditions. I support the Affordable Care Act. He does not. Now, if he had a plan to replace it that also supported people with pre-existing conditions, that would be a whole nother matter. But he doesn't have that plan and neither does President Trump and neither does anyone in the Republican Party. Um, in fact, when they tried to have a plan like that, their own party in the form of Senator John McCain voted it down. He stood on the Senate floor and went like that and that sunk their opportunity to overturn the Affordable Care Act. So now in about two weeks time, government attorneys who work for all of us, but who are directed by President Trump, will be at the Supreme Court trying to take the Affordable Care Act away. I oppose that effort. He supports it. That's that's the difference. And that there's I'm not characterizing that. That's not my opinion. It's just a fact. He opposes the Affordable Care Act. I support it. Let me ask you about the race in general, because, you know, a lot of pundits out there are saying that if the 17th Congressional District votes for Donald Trump, Sean Parnell will be the next congressman. If the 17th district votes for Joe Biden, you're going to be reelected. Uh, do you buy that theory? I don't really buy any theory uh, predicting anything in the year 2020. There's a lot that's happened this year that has caught us all off guard. Um, and I think when you start engaging in all that kind of prognostication, it, it takes away the role of the actual voters. You know, as I've said many times, I wouldn't be in office. Uh, if those kind of theories were all that there was, because both times I've run for Congress so far, uh, President Trump received more votes in my district than the Democratic candidate against him, uh, yet I still came out on top. And so clearly people are willing to split their tickets, to keep an open mind, to vote for people on both sides as long as they agree with where they stand on the issues. And, you know, that makes some sense because the, the role of a member of Congress is different than the role of the president. And that's something I've, I've spent a lot of time talking to people about for the last two years. And I understand that, I, that I'm running for Congress, not the president. I'm not sure my opponent uh, gets that. Well, let me then ask you, uh, Congressman, why should a voter for President Trump in the 17th district support you for reelection? Well, I think um, some of the important economic issues in this community, which President Trump has talked about, involve manufacturing, the development of our energy resources, especially natural gas, trying to help the steel industry. Um, and maintaining a strong national defense. Uh, those are all things that I favor as well. I think President Trump's actual performance on those issues has been ineffective, but if you're a voter that uh, cares about those things, it would be easier for you to support both of us. 
Um, I've also proven that I can get bills signed by President Trump. You know, I've had three bills signed by him already, and I'm about to have a fourth uh, related to veterans issues. And so I'm never going to give up, no matter how toxic it gets uh, in Washington, D.C. or in the media, trying to work with the other side and get things done. And a lot of people care about that more than they care about the individual party. And then uh, finally, Congressman, let me give you a chance. Uh, are you going to win this election? I think so. But the most important thing is uh, we're going to probably see record voter turnout, which I think is good for our democracy. And what I really am going to do is fight to make sure every single vote is counted. And, and I believe that if we do that, whatever the people's choice is, is the people's choice. And we should all stand by that. And I'll be happy just that, you know, I got to engage in the process and make my case with people. I happen to believe that by sticking up for people's health care and promising to, to play a stronger federal role in leading us out of this pandemic that we're going to do quite well. But it all starts with honoring people's right to vote. Let me ask you, since you raised that subject, as you know, your opponent and frankly, members of Congress in the Republican side, some of your colleagues right here in Western Pennsylvania have filed a variety of different lawsuits over voting in Pennsylvania. Are you concerned that we may not get an accurate count or that the count will be delayed on election night? I don't, I, I don't know that I would say the count will be delayed. Um, I think it may take some time because we're doing it differently this year. You know, we're in the middle of a once in a lifetime pandemic and we have to vote a little differently than we did before. And a lot of people are voting by mail in order to be safe for themselves and their families and the poll workers. Uh, so all I'm asking of everybody is patience. Yes, it may take a couple of days, three days, four days, who knows. Uh, and we're in a culture now where we tend to get a lot of things more quickly than that. But this is a pretty important decision we're about to make as a country. Um, so it's important for us all to just uh, be patient and wait for the vote to be counted correctly so we know who the president is. And then we can all move on uh, from what has been a very difficult campaign for the American people with some certainty uh, that we've made a decision and that, that decision should be respected. And that, that's all I really care about. Well, Congressman Connor Lamb, always a pleasure to be with you, sir. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, John. Well, it's uh, light rain this evening, but I think tomorrow comes as a pretty dry day overall and the warmest of the entire forecast. And like I said earlier, that's not 